Top five thoughts on further expansion in the college football playoff. Um, you know, we've kind of been through this, but I mean, I think it bears kind of wrapping up and, and like putting the these details out uh, that people may not even quite realize. Number five, if you go to 14 teams, only two teams have a bye. Uh, and guess who those teams will probably be? The SEC and Big Ten champion. Most likely, yeah. So um, it makes it – like 14 just seems like such a wonky number it to does. me. It does. Yep. It doesn't make sense. And then you only get two teams with a bye, which, you know, that'll be sold as like theoretically if you're one of the top two teams, you'll get it. But honestly, that would be Georgia and Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Like that's who it's going to be. All the time. Well, yeah. better say Michigan first nowadays. Michigan, yeah, Michigan. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michigan. Well, Harbaugh's gone, so I'm I may sure. be defaulting. They, they are the reigning champs, though. They are, so, they are. Yeah, and like three yeah. wins in a row. Is it over Ohio State now at this yeah. point? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I get you, though. Yeah, but they had to go deep into the well to get yeah. that, and yeah, now yeah. he's he's gone. Number four. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that it's, to me, the, this most simplistic thing, and I know it's not probably what people want to see because they get further watered down, but 16 – Everybody plays the same number of games to, on the journey there. Everybody gets the home field game, but I don't know. Like you, definitely, I would think want to give like the number one team or number yeah. two team like some kind of benefit. So I guess that's where the that's fourteen the comes NFL into play. Model because the NFL has fourteen. That is the NFL model. That's yes. The NFL so model. maybe that's what they're striving for here, but that doesn't solve the problem of like those two teams not getting to host a home playoff game, which mm. I would think that they would want, especially knowing like well, it's not like you're going to be would. fourteen. They would. Because the first two rounds would be at home sites. So okay, okay, round, yeah, you're so right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, 14, so eight. maybe maybe 14s, I, I don't know, but it, it seems like they're going to grow this thing again, yeah. right? I so mean, let's go to a couple on 16. On 16, do all four P4s eventually, I should have said eventually, get four AQs as they start to push the G5 out? Like, that's what I wonder about this. Do you just say it's a 16-team playoff and these are the four we're taking? Or do you do everybody gets three and then there's four at large? I don't know. Yeah. But Yeah, I don't think that it'll ever be square with all four of those conferences. No. I think inevitably the SEC and the Big Ten, it's like I was saying earlier with the, the 16, I think under that format you'd probably have it with four for each of the SEC and the Big Ten and then two each for the Big 12 and the ACC. And look, where are we with that? In a couple of years, is the ACC still around for all intents and purposes? Yeah. Is Florida State still in that league? Is North Carolina still in that league? I mean, that's something that we don't quite know just yet. Um, and how much does the expanded playoff maybe calm that? But although it seems like Florida State's, I mean, that's just, I don't know. That's going to be interesting to watch. But if things stay status quo, then I think that you have to give the SEC and the Big Ten just for, because of the whole political battle some kind of leg up. So I would think that, yeah, they get like four piece, the others get two. And then I think you have to have some G5 representation, right? Like at least a team in there. Yeah. I mean, you can't not have like the two lane of one year. I know Liberty left a bad taste in people's mouths because of the way they finished against Oregon and the schedule that they played. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'll say to this, I don't think all four get the four. I, I think that there would be some, like where's Notre Dame fit in in this case? They yeah. wouldn't have a spot even if they were yeah, eligible for so, it. Yeah, so, so the, they're, they're also pulling the strings on this, so nothing's going to happen. But, yeah. yeah. And, and Although, I will say, like, the whole argument a couple days ago about, well, Notre Dame's going to squeeze out was an awful argument. Like, people just, I don't think we're thinking that through. No. Like, they're going to be forced into a conference. No, they wrote now, this. Yeah, they, they helped write it. And it was, it was a, some ridiculous takes out there on Notre Dame getting squeezed. But I will say... That argument's not entirely extinguished just yet because, again, we need to see what happens with the ACC given their tie-ins there, but also because of the automatic qualifiers. Because if you gussied it up enough, then, yeah, you're leaving them, like, so many spots to try and get in. And that that could be interesting if it if it really closed in around them. Well, but that's about the only scenario I see. I don't think Notre Dame's worried that they would never not be if they were in the top 12 and at large. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. They're, like, the... The schools that would get skipped over in that scenario, if you had like the four, like, you know, we have four automatic qualifiers and mm -hmm. their fourth one is number 17, that school's not going to be Notre Dame. Right. Like, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be Kansas. Right. It's yeah. Gonna, it's going to be Arizona. I'm still not a believer that yeah. they're getting forced into anything because it's, I understand they haven't won a title in a long time and all that, but I, I don't think that that they really have, paints the whole picture they of have Notre their Dame. Own TV. Yeah, I know. I know. That's, they, I, I agree. I just yeah. think I see that conversation crop, uh, pop up a lot. And it's popped up here this week as well, and so I uh, just wanted to point that out. That if you if you did like twelve, and then you had, you know, 
four and four for the SEC and Big Ten, and then like two and two for the other two, and like there's only two spots, I guess. Like the but you want to guarantee a G five, and then boom, like there's one spot remaining, but right. still. It's still Notre Dame, and they're going to get in over anybody else. So that doesn't even really solve that. Look, a conference that they're not in for football, therefore they should not get to make football decisions on in the ACC. They told them to add Stanford and Cal, and they friggin' did it. Yeah, Like, that's how much power they have because Notre Dame's like, you should add Stanford and Cal. And most of the people in the conference at first were like, Ah, yeah. we don't really think so. They don't really do anything for us, and there's a lot of travel. And Notre Dame's like, no, you should do it. I, and then they were like, all right. I definitely don't agree with a lot of the, the Notre Dame notions out there, but I wanted to bring that up because I know that that, that is yeah. part of the, the conversation. But, yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't think they're being forced into anything. They helped create this bad boy. Um, they helped the ACC expand. And so, yeah, they're going to have a place no matter what the AQs are and all of that. But, yeah, I just I don't think it'll be yeah. a, a, an all-P4 tourney by any means. All right, so here's an interesting thing. If they go to 16, the only teams out of the conference title game would get buys. So if, if you are, you know, if you want to buy, you're better off not being one of the better teams in your conference. So the only teams that are going to get a week off are the ones – who don't play in the conference title game. Oh, that's interesting because no, there would be no buys whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. so 16, okay. there's no buys at all. So the only teams that theoretically get buys, um, yeah, I ran out of space here. Too many things. But, like, that is the only way to not, like, if you really want that buy or whatever, well, come in third. Yeah, that, that's something they're going to have to address and look at if they were to go to that. Which right now, then, that's not a concern. But. Which then creates an issue for the conference title games and that you're going to have teams that are going, well, maybe well, those we're just, in anyway. Yeah. Maybe those just go away. Maybe that's what, what happens. I think that that's as much of a, a possibility to discuss as anything else. Because well, if you we go to a 16-team playoff, then the revenue that you're losing for the conference right. title game can theoretically be replaced and maybe even improved on. Right, because that's, again, what is that? What is the conference title game? What was the entire creation and the purpose of the conference title game? Money. More money. So, yeah, yeah if you have a bigger playoff and now you don't really need that conference title uh, bag, then you could move on from those um, and, yeah, let the – you know, last man standing, I guess, declared themselves the real or whoever finished in the regular season the highest, especially with how big these conferences are at this point. So, yeah, maybe conference title games go to the wayside as a result of that. If you were to go to 16, which, again, has not happened just yet. No. Number two, how can the Big 12 and ACC benefit from this at all? Like, how can they benefit from the expansion? I'm not saying that they won't. I'm saying that these two conferences in particular, and the ACC's got equally big fish to fry in in trying to keep themselves relevant with teams wanting to leave. So how can they stay stay in this, and how can they benefit from this? How do you get something that's going to help you and not just be a bone from the other two? Yeah, I think it's it's a tough – like, it may be – uh, just rhetorical right now. It is, <laughs> but like, in some how- ways, it is. I yeah. think I think the way you could benefit. I mean, from a Big Twelve point of view, I think if you could get your two automatic qualifiers, and especially if you know conference title games go to the wayside, because I think that could kind of leave a bad taste. If you're taking two from the Big Twelve, but that would automatically wouldn't it not mean probably the loser in the conference title game was would automatically get in after losing. So I don't think that's really that good of a look for any league to have your loser then still go make the playoff. Unless it's a scenario where it's like a massive upset or yeah. something. But, um, yeah, I think they could benefit by securing a couple of automatic qualifiers at minimum. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they'll get more than a couple. Um, but that's the first step is to at least guarantee that. But beyond that, yeah, I don't, I don't know how they, they stand to benefit because if the other two leagues are uh, going to still be – getting more teams in, that's also more money. And so the money gap just increases. It doesn't close um, yeah. necessarily. And so, yeah, I don't I don't know where you stand to benefit all that much outside of just ensuring that you have a couple of your best teams are going to get a crack at it. And you know what? The best thing, and we've said this for the Big 12, the ACC is different because the ACC has got some questions right now as far as their bigger brands go. The Big 12 in its current iteration – When anybody asks, like, how can they improve? How can they get more respect? How can they do that? Folks, the answer is just go win. I mean, that's bottom line is go win. If TCU had beaten Georgia, how many conversations are drastically different about a lot of different things? Um, And so that's what you have to do is go and just win and, uh, and win as much as you possibly can. That's about all you can do. Yeah. 
I did feel bad that, like, I feel like this was a year that TCU, like, if you took this TCU playoff team and put them in the final against Michigan, who they did beat, but, like, at least it's a game that would not have been 65 to 7. Like, yeah, just, Georgia like, was so freaking good. They're just good, so man. good. Like, that's one of the, like, that, you know, 2022 Georgia team is up there with, you know, the top 10 greats of all time. Yeah, probably. I um, mean, as far it, as. Yeah, the dominance and just uh, how good they, they were and draft picks and all those different types of things. Yeah, I mean, they, they ran into a buzzsaw, and I don't know, maybe Michigan would have played them better, but it doesn't matter. TCU beat yeah. Michigan, and they, they beat them with their style and uh, with, with TCU style, the explosive plays and just making some plays on defense, and, and Michigan made it a game, but, you know, TCU won and then and had the unfortunate task of yeah. going on this huge stage and playing this like a monster of a team yeah. that Kirby Smart had put together. and uh, But, yeah, I think the Big 12, ACC, uh, again, it's, it's you got to go win. Got to go get some yeah. get some teams in that final and, and hopefully get somebody over the top and, and win one here and there. Yeah. And number one, how long does the G5 actually get a team in? Like, how long? Like, this is my question. Every time we hear things like this, it's just they should be making notes of, all right, well, what's our what's our plan B? Like, mm -hmm. how do we – how do we yeah. do this? Because I just worry that there's going to be eventually be a point where, like, listen, we let you guys have your fun for a little while. We were happy to have you in it. But ultimately, this is no one wants this. It's not you. It's us. It's not. Yeah, exactly. We have to move on from you, which I think sucks because it gives them, you know. But, like, how long before they do get shoved out? Because they spent so long fighting their way in. Yeah, I, I yeah, and I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is, and I don't I don't know that they even know what the answer to yeah. that is right now. I would like to think that as long as the Big Twelve and the ACC remain involved, that there would be at least a spot right for mm. your G five yeah. best ranked team. I I think that if you want to maintain the whole status quo of everybody being included, even if we know it's it's slanted in certain directions or, or weighted more heavily in other directions, that you at least there's that door of opportunity. That's all everybody asks for, right? So it may be one door for a hundred plus teams, but you do know that uh Tulane or a Liberty or an SMU if they had a special year, just so on and so forth, that you at least have – well, SME doesn't even count now. My bad. Mm -hmm. They're in the ACC. But you get what I'm saying. Uh, if you have a special type of year that you could have that opportunity. But, yeah, I, I don't know how attractive that first-round game with the Georgia versus – in a 16-teamer, like Georgia versus Liberty. I don't know how much the networks are going to really want to, to pay for that. So that's that's a question that I think has yet to – find an answer but uh, certainly will be amongst the the discussions moving forward absolutely all right that's gonna do it for us we're back in tomorrow craig and i here tomorrow smoky is off uh and we'll have you know college football and sports talk galore for you uh three hours of just pure joy that's what we do here at 365 sports